Greetings and welcome to CRT Gaming Podcast, episode number 27, Darksiders. <laughs> this is Jones and uh, with me tonight are my good friends Daz Pick and Gohan. I'll ask Gohan first, how are you doing tonight? <laughs> you know, I, I feel like I've gone through hell and back. <laughs> And I guess, you know, I think he's doing okay, but we'll just check with him anyway. Uh, Mr. Daz Pick, did you, uh, did you complete your quest in forging the Armageddon blade? The blade is forged, my friend, and the Abyssal armor is collected. Well, so, uh, last week we did uh, Metroid, which was Gohan's uh, game of choice for us to take a peek at. And this week we're doing Darksiders, and that was Daz's choice here. So, Mr. Daz Pick, what's going on? The seals have been broken. Here's what's going on. I'm not a religious person, but I am a huge fan of stories that involve uh, religious mythologies. Um, the prophecy, for instance, Supernatural uh, and Darksiders. Uh, they incorporate stories from you know, the Bible and whatnot into a very cool story and it made it, made it incredibly interesting. And, and that's one of the draws for me to this game in particular. I have a uh, an affection towards games or, or movies that deal with the mythology. Like, uh, like I enjoy the Greek mythology in the God of War series. Uh, it, it was kind of cool that it started delving into the Norse mythology, you know, in God of War 4. You know, when it deals around things that have been created before, it adds to it, changes it, makes it its own. So yeah, the religious undertones to the story definitely kept me very engaged in what was going on but then there's uh all these conspiratorial elements and and people backstabbing each other and different alliances are being formed with different groups that it's like you know what the hell's going on this is this is this is odd the, as soon as i played it the first time it just really it just grabbed me and I really enjoyed the hell out of it you know, and on top of that, you got Mark Hamill doing the you know, voice that. of a demon that's trapped in, well, it's not trapped, he's bound to your gauntlet, which is pretty freaking cool in and of itself. I, I was going to ask you, because I was playing, uh, you know, the the, the, be, the the beginning, and as soon as I heard that voice, I was like, that is fucking Mark Hamill. <laughs> like, the, the guy who's trapped in your gauntlet. Yeah, the Watcher. On the little bit that you played, Gohan, I know you didn't get to play for very long, but give me your thoughts on what you played so far, please. This week was a pretty busy week, but I got to sit down, get some quality time in with it. And I have to say, when you picked this game, I was not super excited about it. But after playing it, um, it you know, it's just a good combination of different third-person styles of games. Like there's clearly they're riffing off of the original God of War series in a big, big way, right? With kind of the attacks, but there's also this kind of layer of the Legend of Zelda once the kind of world starts to open up a little bit more. Um, but absolutely, you cannot deny that there's a huge, huge, huge uh, Diablo influence on the game. But um, but yeah, I mean that's like a good good medley of of stuff. The God of War games, I wasn't a huge fan of them when they came out. I think one of the things that was missing for me in the original God of War was having more of an adventure because the game was beautiful and awesome, but it was very linear. Like in Darksiders, you actually got that third person kind of beat em up brawler experience with that kind of element of exploration and, you know, adventure game, you know, mechanics. So. I never really got a Diablo vibe out of it, but definitely uh, the further you get into it, it the, the Legend of Zelda elements start happening a lot more where you start unlocking tools to further your adventure into the world. And, you know, obviously you're upgrading weapons and things like that to make them more effective against the enemies. You unlock more uh, abilities, combos, uh, skills that use your wrath. Uh, you eventually gain back your 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 chaos form um you know you get your horse so you can travel around the world faster you unlock a gun uh so you can shoot from your horse and all kinds of stuff like that uh and and just all those 
those tools and everything, like the 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 horn for the gatekeepers, um, the the glaive, the the, the portal gun, basically, um, you know. And then, then there's all the homage that the game pays to all the games. Basically, it's uh, so some of its parts. You know, you've got there's elements of Panzer Dragoon. There's uh, like you mentioned, God of War, the uh, Legend of Zelda. Obviously, I already said it, but all that stuff together just really made a very interesting, fun, uh, and you know, it, it, it just it grabbed me, man. And I, I've played this one. I've played one, two, three, and the new one, Genesis, and I've enjoyed every one of them. Three, probably the least. Uh, there's story stuff that uh you know maybe jones will do a better job of of illustrating the story for us than i will currently i'll touch on the story then basically there there are uh the four horsemen of apocalypse okay there are seven seals when the seven seals are broken it summons the four horsemen of the apocalypse to bring forth the end of the world actually that's when the world will be judged and the world will be judged by this thing called the Charred Council, which is their little fictional made up. It's kind of like uh, Marvel's has the Living Tribunal. Uh, they have the Charred Council and it's just basically going to judge. Now, you mentioned the, the Christian mythos and this did do one thing that was kind of I thought was kind of interesting is it, it it's twisted. You know, it's not what it is, but it, it took it and wove it into a story. Um, but the but like a. Uh, in the mythology of this game, when the seven seals are broken, uh, they're broken because you have the angels and demons are at war with each other. Okay, so the angels and demons uh, basically, in the midst of their war, uh, humankind is born. Okay, so they end up forging these seals, and basically when mankind is ready which means they've evolved to the point where they can handle this war, then that's when the apocalypse happens. And then angels, demons, mankind, it's all judged. So the seals got broken somehow, and war showed up and brought forth the apocalypse. But the seals technically kind of weren't broken, so he was basically, you know, everything went wrong. Something shady happened, and he's the fall guy. He's the patsy. Right, he's totally the fall guy. He ends up making a bargain to, you know, find, try to figure out what the hell happened. And, you know, what, what takes place is just with all the ins and outs of the story and everything and the, just the massive adventure you end up going on, um, you know, you meet all these cool characters, you meet these, these makers that, that help build the world, uh, you meet more angels and try to get them on your side. Um, and even some demons that you need to get help from, like uh, Samael. Uh, but it's uh, it, it was a very cool story, and you know, I don't want to spoil anything too much. But I will say that I loved, absolutely loved the ending when when I beat that game, the way it wrapped up, and the it, it just it, it had me on the edge of my seat. I was super pumped, <laughs> uh, hoping for what was going to come next. Uh, the, the, the hope was that the games would pick right up where this one left off, but uh, ultimately that's not what they ended up doing. Uh, Darksiders 2 came out. It went back basically to happening in parallel to this one, which, which was cool. It just wasn't what I was hoping for, but you know, they wanted to introduce you to, to death. Um, it, 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 that game was still was good as well uh it also but again the story just it just the story didn't go the direction i was hoping it would but i still really enjoyed it um it it, it ended up introducing more rpg elements you had a whole loot system uh a skill tree with like so you could have different bills like a, a heavy spell caster or heavy comp you know uh weapon combatant Death was different in that he wasn't so much of a, a, a tank. You know, he's not just gonna sit there and and take a beating. You you had to get in and out. You, you didn't even have a block. You you dodged everything, 
at least with war, you could block and the counter and things like that. Yeah, like I think the thing with the combat, like you said, it isn't like difficult. It, you know, like it's not trying to like beat you down in any way, but like it is very satisfying. Like it's like it is very punchy and snappy and satisfying with how yeah. your character moves and attacks and like the uh, not overly done like you know like uh, flourish like kills you know like it's not like game pauses so you can watch some overwrought cinematic you like just do some badass unique animation to a guy and you like pretty seamlessly blend into kicking the next dude's ass you know <laughs> um, but then you know ultimately THQ shuddered and hopes and dreams for uh, Darksiders three and beyond you know ultimately what i think people wanted was a four-player co-op um with all four horsemen but those dreams were dashed when thq closed down um for a while anyway well they had a, if memory serves me right ba back before this came out they had trouble finding someone to publish this like this game has always had a rough because i remember seeing like the uh like concept art and stuff like that long before you know and there was talks of four games before the first one ever came out well let's talk about some cool things in the game one of the things i thought was kind of cool that i, I kind of haven't thought about in a long time but uh you basically uh meet a demon called volgrim which you uh trade souls for trade souls for upgrades to your weapons or you know health or whatnot I don't know, like games, sometimes ga things in games ground you to it and other times it, it like breaks, it, it breaks a little bit. So like the one thing I, it didn't make sense to me, like, like if you ever play, I, I don't know, like, like a, a lot of games don't make sense, but like say you played Zelda, you throw a pot, it breaks, there's, you know, there's money in it. Um, why are the souls in like inanimate objects? Like I collect souls, so why am I busting up chairs and light poles and souls are coming out of them? <laughs> I thought that was kind of strange. The thing I thought was cool was like after you start finding these locations Valgrim's in, you, you then open like teleport ways to bounce across the map. And I think they're called like serpent holes. Serpent holes. Yeah, I say snake pathways, but they're serpent holes. And the serpent holes were kind of cool seeing them for this, you know, here recently. Because um, they reminded me a lot of what God of War 4 used when you teleported around the different realms. And I thought that was kind of neat. And that's the only other game I can think of that that kind of does it the same. The the thing that, you know, to reference, you know, God of War again, just because it does bear such a huge influence on this game, it's like one of the things that Darksiders did, and I don't know how much more they went into this, but like just the whole like mantling and climbing. And then I just got to the part where um, you get the wings and you can do the hovering and you kind of do these the the the, the this kind of like pilot wing style like you know you you launch up like that that's not something they would do in a god of war game like kratos he'd like maybe climb stuff or swing or hop from you know platform to platform but you can totally tell in darksiders that they were going to do a larger world because they were giving you tools to fly through big spaces you know and of course like the climbing felt really satisfying too like those are things that you want in an adventure game so speaking about the, the tools you know uh, i mentioned earlier you know like you just said the, the shadow flight wings is one the cross blade that you get that you start imbuing with with fire to solve puzzles and things like that and yeah it gets involved in the the puzzles and i think that's kind of where you left off uh when you, you were going to start using those well, the, the crossblade and whatnot to start solving various Zelda type puzzles and things like that. It's a glaive. Yeah, I just got, I just got the glaive. Exactly. That's what I was just about to say. I, I have the batarang. <laughs> so I mentioned earlier, you know, one of the things you unlock is a, is a portal gun, basically. And towards the end of the game, you start having these puzzles where you have to, you have a portal in a wall that you have to supercharge so that when you come out the other side, you go flying. Uh, or, or come out at high speed <laughs> but sometimes you'll have to you'll have to shoot a portal across the way and then another portal and then 
through the portal that you're looking through, you'll have to throw another portal. So <laughs> it, get, it gets really crazy because uh, there's like portals within portals. Uh, uh, it, it's really awesome. And that, that's towards the end of the game. And some of them are a little infuriating, but uh, they definitely uh, threw my kid for a loop as she was playing them. Like the normal game itself, it, it's hack and slash. And it, it's not really hard. It's not hard at all. Like you, you might die a couple times on a boss to figure it out. But outside of that, you're not dying. Where you're spending your time is uh, you go on various quests and each quest kind of leads to a dungeon that leads to a boss. And the time's figuring these dungeons out. Um, and you could be you could be in a dungeon for a couple hours um, just trying to figure it out. Which, which was kind of fun. I haven't played, uh, and like I said, it, it kind of reminiscent of like, you know, older Zelda games where you go to, you know, you're in a dungeon, you got puzzles, you got to figure out how to progress. I just say I like that about it. I haven't, uh, that's one thing missing in the Breath of the Wild are massively large dungeons. Yeah, I, I got to agree with you, Jones. The, the dungeons definitely, um, uh, while some were trying, it, it, it definitely was one of the best parts of the game because I mean, like you said, the combat's not hard. The that's not what you're dying from, but the puzzles and the, the just figuring out how to navigate some of those dungeons, it, it's very. It can get very tricky, especially especially towards the end of the game as they just get more and more convoluted and you know multi-level dungeons and yeah, it. I, I really loved that aspect of the game. Uh, among so many other things that I really enjoyed. So how cl- how close? So if I just unlock the glaive, how close to the kind of more you know open kind of Zelda dungeon kind of section? Yeah, the first dungeon. No, how close am I to it? Very close. Yeah, you're you were basically right there at that first dungeon, we're starting to unlock some of the you know the, the more complicated stuff, but. That first dungeon is it's serious business. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's multiple puzzles. Uh, as I was playing through it this week, I was like, oh, man, yeah, I totally you know, realized I'd spent a large amount of time in there. And it was just surprising that this is the first dungeon I'm already a good bit of a time investment. Just go, just navigating it, you know, and figuring out, OK, I got to do this. I got to I got to drop this down to break the floor so I can go down there and then blow a hole in this wall and throw this bomb through this window uh, to blow up this <laughs> this uh, outcropping uh, and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, uh, the dungeons, they're, they're just no joke. They're 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 the really good part of the game. And uh, that's to put it simply. But yeah, and prior to this, you know, you meet Samuel, who is by far one of the more interesting characters in the game. But, you know, he's definitely got his own agenda. Uh, he sends you on a quest to kill these these bosses, and that that is one of the highlights for sure. Um, but yeah, yeah, you definitely met him at this point if you're in the first dungeon. But yeah, as you're playing through all this and you start getting all the different the uh, game, we start to see where it's pulling from all these different games, you know. And and you, like I mentioned before, you got that Panzer Dragoon level. It's just what I really really enjoyed about it because you know it, it was definitely the people that made the game were calling back to all the things that they enjoyed as they grew up playing these you know these types of games as well and so they're like you know what let's include a little section of this type of gameplay from this you know this thing that we like and this thing that we like and all those pieces and parts that you know that made the whole definitely are it's just one of the reasons all of the game it's kind of a jack of all trades but it does everything it does pretty competently. Uh, I mean, it's a solid, it's a solid game. So what, what's happened? So I've, I've only, I've never played these games until this week. So they've made a couple other in the series. Yeah. So let me ask this then, Daz. So like, like this game, basically you just go through and you find out, you know, who, basically betrayed you like like who broke the seals this game's old i mean spoilers you know um it it ends up being like the angels you know basically did it and yeah and and and, uh, daz is right it's that does have a really cool ending where uh basically 
a lot of stuff happens but at the end of it like heaven's against you hell's against you this charged council which is basically run by the creator whoever that is is going to be against you and they're kind of telling you you know are you know are you ready to take this on alone and uh he's kind of like something like no not alone and like these four these three other comments start coming out of the sky which are the other horsemen and that's kind of how it ends so like in two i I played it but i didn't beat it now now two like in in one you get your horse which is ruin which kind of acts basically more as a a faster speed of transit in in this game but in darksiders your horse is more of an exploration vehicle like the game from what I remember, it opens up more where you can like explore around on your horse. Um, do, the Destroyer is mentioned in Darksiders. Like, I haven't played 3 very much at all, and I haven't played the Genesis one. Do you ever see this demon, the Destroyer? Abaddon's actually the Destroyer in Darksiders 1. Uh, apparently after Straga, that guy at the very beginning, uh, kills him, uh, he gets turned into the destroyer by Lilith or somebody. Um, but yeah, Abaddon is the destroyer. That's the, okay. I didn't know that was the destroyer. Two takes place kind of at the same time that one's happening on two. It kind of added to the mythos of who these characters are. So, um, in uh, Christian mythology, there's the Nephilim, the Nephilim or is a union between angels and humans. Uh, in, in this game, the Nephilim exist, but they're a union between angels and demons. So, in like the Christian mythos, like Nephilim's bad, bad deal, don't mess with them. Uh, same thing in this mythos, and basically, the Chard Council uh, had chosen four of them and told four of these Nephilim are going to guarantee you this unbelievable power, uh, but you're going to work for us, and that's how the yeah, that's how the horsemen were born, and in doing that, their first mission is to eradicate the rest of your kind. So yeah, too, you know, you get this parallel story uh, that you know gives you the origin of the of the horsemen and how they had to you know eradicate their 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 brethren of the Nephilim, and that's all really good, and it, it, it tells a little you know kind of you know, semi emotional story of of death carrying the souls of all his his brothers and the shards that are trapped in his chest from this uh, crystal that breaks at the start of the game and he's you know trying to figure out how to get his brother free and all this and you know it, it has a, a good ending as well yeah I, I didn't beat two so i haven't seen it uh the, my only beef with the game was and this is my issue with three as well and is that what three did did three actually continue yeah, it didn't further the ending of the first game oh really the <laughs> you know it 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 told a, a you know a parallel story which is cool but you know the, the ending of one promise it, it makes the promise that hey you're gonna get to play uh you know four all four characters in the game you know and that doesn't happen so three was built by a different team you know when thq went down um vigil went down with them and you know you had some people left over that they formed uh gunfire games and they made darksiders 3 to keep the franchise going uh, but i think at the time you know people were kind of into like the the souls style games and so it kind of followed that template a little bit uh, it didn't have as nearly as deep a story as the first two games did. Now, does three get puzzly, or is it? Because I, I played it for long enough for it to lose my interest. I was like, ah. It's not on the same level as Dark Siders One. There are some puzzles. Uh, it's just not as heavy as as even the puzzles in two. Two gets some some crazy puzzles where you start having to split your form and you'll you'll plant a statue on like a plate and then you'll split into two characters that you can control and have one activate a pressure plate while one is fighting something else and then activating another pressure plate kind of thing um and so that that gets really really cool um 
and then and then on top of that, it, you're also doing the portal type puzzles from the first game, along with splitting yourself into basically you know two forms, <laughs> and so it gets it gets pretty crafty with some of the stuff you got to pull off. Uh, I really I really enjoyed too. I just I, I, like I said, the only my only issue was that the story wasn't furthered from the ending of one. Um, you know, here's here's hoping that we get that and we you know someday it seems like the fourth one is kind of looks like it's more of like a diablo style camera like so they went from like a up close camera in dark siders 3 to this isometric you know kind of diablo game diablo looking at least so yeah our dark siders genesis uh, which is a prequel to all of it actually uh it takes place before one and yeah they did go with an isometric camera but somehow (laughs) they still retained the puzzles and gameplay of darksiders one while adding a new character and you can play co-op which is kind of cool but it does play like the first game like you're still doing you you have the cross blade and you're still using it to throw it through a fire uh to activate torches or whatever needs to get lit up and you know and then you have a completely new character strife that plays different from any characters that have been in the game before you know he's a ranged character so he's a little squishy when i saw the pictures of genesis i assumed it was going to be another diablo clone and i was like oh come on man but and then i played it and it is not at all it is it is really like playing darksiders one but isometrically. Also, a little little point of point of interest is uh, Genesis was actually made by a group called Airship Syndicate, who are actually the original Vigil team. So Joe Mad and all his peeps uh, basically made this game, and uh, you know they said it was a smaller budget, which is one of the reasons they went for that camera style. Uh, I don't I don't know how budget affects a 3d camera versus isometric but that was one of the reasons they gave but i think it works really well as uh isometric co-op dark side i think they did a killer job i mean seriously hats off to them like they said that they were going to do it and they did it so kudos all right so here's the bottom line uh i'm a huge fan of these games i'm so glad they've gotten as many of they of, as they've gotten out um you know, of the f- four, uh, three is my least favorite. Um, but, I, you know, if it helped keep the franchise going, then, you know, awesome. Uh, I really like two. One is still my favorite. Uh, Genesis is pretty badass, though. Uh, I've been, it's been nice to play it with my daughter. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm really happy with them. <laughs> They've all been a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping they, one day, we get that four player co op. <laughs> That's that's the dream, man. Just ho- ho- keep my fingers crossed. Yeah, they they need the uh, if you're familiar with the game, the the four swords. You know, the Zelda four swords. They they need that version of that style of four player co op game. But you have all the cool horsemen and their you know their cool innate you know uh, powers and stuff like that. But uh, next week uh, there's been some uh, co conspirators here at the CRT game podcast office and uh, actually can we change our name to the charred council podcast <laughs> can okay. we talk well, like just, this? Uh, <laughs> exactly we all sound like dark side from the uh, you know super friends TV show yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I heard rumors uh, this week that uh, Mr. Gohan and Das pick up something they want us to try out next week. So what are we getting into, gentlemen? So Ghouls and Ghosts is kind of a classic. There's a lot of awesome games in the series, but this kind of the shining star. And uh, I think, you know, it isn't a super long game. 
okay, look, you can beat this game in within an hour. Um, so I think we want to try to see, you know, who can get the farthest, who can who can survive the uh, the de the demon village uh, of uh, super of uh, ghouls and ghosts on the, on the Sega Genesis. So. Okay, so we're gonna do like something that's not like a like a let's play. We're gonna do like a let's beat. Like who can beat this the first? Or it's a competition. It's it's a little bit of a competition, I think, Jones. Okay. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna show all three of us playing ghouls and ghosts, and you know then we're gonna try and see who gets the furthest, and whoever gets the furthest, then we'll follow that gameplay. Um, but I suspect it's gonna be fairly painful for all of us. So <laughs> so good luck, gentlemen. May the best Arthur win. <laughs> oh, jeez. That should be fun. So uh, stay tuned to next week, and uh, we'll see how uh, how painful this game actually is. Until then, this is uh, Jones with Daz Pick and Gohan, and we are signing out. Until next time.